Hi, I'm Kaito Seo. I'm interested in origin of life, and here's my picture so you can match me talking. Today, I will talk about my research about liquid carbon dioxide and experiments about dissolution and distribution of inorganics into liquid CO2. To start with, I would like to talk about the liquid state of CO2. Generally, CO2 is known to take gas state and solid form which you use to keep your food freezing. But if you give enough pressure, CO2 turns into liquid. This is the phase diagram of CO2 and you can see in what temperature and pressure CO2 turns into liquid. This movie on the right is showing liquid CO2 pouring inside the container. This is what it looks like for those who have not seen liquid phase of CO2 before. It is colorless and transparent just like water. One of the special characteristics of liquid CO2 is its hydrophobicity. It is known to dissolve less than 1% of water. As a result, it forms two layers of liquid just like oil and water as it is shown in the photograph here. Now, some of you might be wondering how oil-like liquid CO2 relate to origin of life at all. So let's move on to where we can find liquid CO2 on Earth. The existence of liquid CO2 in Natro is limitedly reported. It was found near hydrosome vent at Okino Trough, Mayan Arc, and one in Norwegian Ocean. The clip from Google Earth is showing you the coordinates right now. Next, the mechanism of how liquid CO2 reservoir is formed is shown as a diagram. Geothermal heat makes fluid mix of supplied seawater and magma. As the fluid flows upwards, the decrease in temperature and pressure leads to phase separation, and CO2 accumulates under sediment. Since liquid CO2 is known to possess unique oil-like features, unlike surrounding seawater-based fluid, this fluid may act as a solvent for hydrophobic solute, which probably composition different from the surrounding. However, due to lack of observation made to this underwater CO2 reservoir, and not much experimental research conducted about liquid CO2 in natural environment, we do not know much about it. So, now that I have talked about hydrophobic nature of liquid CO2, and how it's formed in the subsurface around hydrosomal vents. I want to go over how hydrosomal vent is important to origin of life. Hydrosomal vent is suggested to be one of the plausible environments for origin of life, and that is because it supplies heat continuously, and there is water all around it for chemical reactions to happen, and those reactions include electrochemical equilibrium between thermal fluid and seawater through minerals, and also production of organic through water rock reactions. However, there are problems needed to be solved. As an example, since hydrosomal vent is underwater and everywhere around is aqueous, reactions like condensation is thermodynamically unstable as well as other hydrophobic molecules. So we thought, what if liquid CO2 worked as a reservoir for hydrophobic molecules in the probiotic world? Interestingly, theoretical calculations suggest the existence of liquid CO2 in Hadean Ocean. Higher concentration of CO2 in the early Earth makes this possible to happen. Liquid CO2 may have a role in elemental transfer or reservoir in the early ocean as it possesses completely different features to seawater. But again, elemental transfer between liquid CO2 and natural materials focused on early Earth is limitedly reported, for most of data about liquid CO2 is taken for industrial purposes. Therefore, we decided to find about dissolution and distribution of elements experimentally. First, we have to construct our own extraction system for liquid CO2, and then we conducted experiments using the system. Today, I will share about the results of two experiments. First, we focused on major elements that exist in modern seawater, all of them being important elements to Earth and all the living cells and animals. 
Second, we focus on heavy metals, particularly those found in chimneys of hydrothermal vents. Some of those metals are found to form organometallic complex that are known to be soluble to CO2. And also, they're used inside cells binding on proteins. Our objective here is to know about liquid CO2 as a solvent and elucidate that role it had in Hadean Ocean. So first, we try to study the elemental transfer of major ions in seawater to liquid CO2. We prepared artificial seawater from chemical reagents containing major ions of modern seawater. Then, seawater was poured into this reactor, as it shown in the photograph, and then the reaction was so tight, and liquid CO2 was poured through its ball. The pressure was about 5 to 6 megapascal. Seawater and liquid CO2 were mixed for one day using magnetic stoller and left for one day to stabilize. And it is technically difficult to analyze this liquid CO2 as a solvent because it vaporizes in atmospheric pressure. And it's solvent that is not popular. So we decided to collect the solute by extracting the liquid CO2 into another CO tube. This tube was depressurized, so the difference in pressure automatically moved liquid CO2 from the tube. The tube was opened slowly, so gas CO2 would not burst it out. And then pure water was injected in the tube and left out for 30 minutes to collect the elements left behind by CO2. Finally, water was collected and analyzed by ion chromatography. The result is shown here and the graph of y-axis shows the solubility of elements in CO2 with unit of molar fraction multiplied by 1000 and x shows the number of extractions where we have to extract liquid CO2 from the reactor multiple times. Multiple extraction had to be done to exclude the effect of small drops of water left in the tube contaminating when CO2 was extracted from inside. So the plot shown here, which is 6, 7, and 8 extraction, the concentration stabilized, which we think that was successful in excluding any contamination of small drops of water. Now, from this result, sodium and magnesium seems to be rather insoluble to liquid CO2 with very low solubility. Potassium and calcium was not detected at all. The concentration ratio of sodium and magnesium in liquid CO2 is like this ratio in seawater, which suggests that this solubility is resembling seawater. And maybe potassium and calcium could be detected if concentration was higher in the aqueous solution of seawater. So we thought there should be difference based on their elementary properties because likeliness to form complex with CO2 is probably different by these elementary properties. So by using aqueous solution with higher concentration, we might be able to find out about this. But as for now, we conclude that distribution of major elements in seawater from liquid CO2 is very small. Next, I will explain about dissolution of heavy metals in liquid CO2. This time, I used chimney samples from hydrosome vent that was powdered. In previous study, liquid CO2 was found near these hydrosome vents at Okinawa Trough. Before the experiment, we had to change the parts of the reactor to make the, them corrosion resistant. Since the reactor itself was made from stainless steel, which contains heavy metal itself. And those heavy metals could be detected in the extraction through solution. After adjusting the reactor, powdered chimney samples were put into glass vials that went into the reactor. Then, liquid CO2 was poured into the reactor and they were stabilized for one day. Elements were recovered using these tubes, as previous experience did, and analyzed by ICPOES. The analyzed elements are shown in colored squares. Those that were not detected at all is shown in gray, and those that were detected in any of the samples are shown in orange. So, these are some results from the experiment. The red circle implies the concentration of the element found in liquid CO2, while triangle and diamond imply controls before and after the extraction of element. If the red circle is above both controls, we define that to be dissolved. 
and elements on analyzed, silver, calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, nickel, and zinc were detected from at least one of the chimney samples. These elements are classified as transition metals, which is known to form a complex more than other elements, suggesting that dissolution might have happened due to forming complex with CO2. Next results show elements that were constantly detected from liquid CO2 extraction samples, regardless of chimney powders. We think that these elements were dissolved in liquid CO2 from the tank. They are classified as barn group, which is known to form complex with alkali ions. CO2 may have formed a complex by being the alkyl form, CO3 2 minus. So, according to the results from this research, Liquid CO2 seems to dissolve low amount of simple elements from the chimney or distribute major ions from seawater. It suggests that this CO2 might provide low metal environment in the Hadean ion of the ocean, providing unique environment for probiotic chemistry as a reservoir and reaction solvent. Further experiments on various solutes and analysis of liquid CO2 near hydrothermal vent in today's ocean is needed to elucidate the role of liquid CO2 as a solvent. So for future works, we must conduct experiments with longer time force. Even though low solubility was observed, we did not know the reaction time was enough to reach equilibrium. Also, we are working on to analyze the solubility of organic molecules such as amino acids in liquid CO2, so we hope to report that in future research. So that's all for my research, and these are the people who helped me a lot. I truly appreciate them all, and thank you for watching.